want to, you know, introduce you a little bit to my audience, Thank Cindy, because you. Uh, for those who don't know Cindy Simmons, Cindy Brinker Simmons, and you, um, you actually are the daughter of a renowned tennis champion, Maureen Connolly, Connolly Brinker. Yeah. And she uh, she had a nickname, right? Little Mo, Little Mo, you're exactly right. So incredible! She was a number one in the world for yeah. the a season of is it fifty two through fifty four? Absolutely, yeah. fifty two, fifty three, and fifty four. She won Wimbledon all three three times year three times in a row those years, and this is the seventieth anniversary of her third Wimbledon win. Wow! And what's really also special about that is that she was the first woman and still the only American woman, Patricia, to win the calendar Grand Slam, which is Australian, French, Wimbledon, and U.S. Open in one calendar year. And only five players in the history of tennis have ever done that. Yes, that's incredible. But, you know, there's a huge heartbreak in this yes. story, which is yes. that you lost her when she was only 34 years old. Yes, yes. How old were you, Cindy? I was 12. Oh. And, you know, Patricia... She, her last year of competitive play, she did not lose a tennis match. Can you imagine not losing a tennis match your last year of competitive play? But there was one opponent she could not beat, and that was ovarian cancer. So, yes, she was 34, and I was 12, and my little sister was 10. And my dad was just in his late 30s when we lost this beautiful and talented woman. It was like a vacuum had come down from the heavenlies, and it just sucked out all the joy in her home. She was such a sparkle. And I was really yes. angry at God. That's kind of my story. You know? Yes, I know. Yeah. But it, it really, during that, and then you lost your husband. Yes. Uh, in did. 2005 to cancer as well. Again. Uh, and I am a cancer survivor. So yes. I, I. Praise uh, God. Praise God. Yes. 12, 12 years was in April this year. <laughs> yes, thank oh, God. I'm so thrilled. Oh. Yes, and uh, but you know, I know the impact of cancer in a family. I think that I always say that the hardest the hardest, hardest aspect of my journey with cancer was actually to see the impact in my daughters especially. Yes. They were young. Yes. They were very young when when, yes. when this happened. And the fear, you know, the yeah, fear oh, that they're, they're going to lose mommy. Um, so I understand exactly what your mom must have gone through realizing, you know, the pain, uh, she probably suffered triple because she knew that you guys were, you know, were little and we're going to. Absolutely. And a life without a mom. And, you know, she was a champion. So she just was so, so determined to beat it. Like she had done in tennis she was disciplined she was determined she was dedicated and she was a wonderful mom she That's really was you know I always say that even though you know she was known as mom to me but she was known to her her adoring public in the 1950s as a little mo and she was a wonderful mom and and her legacy and her DNA remains today and I remember even though I was young and it was she had cancer for three years uh sweet Patricia and and yet I remember just the way she dealt with it was just with such dignity and such determination mm -hmm. and and joy. I mean, she she exhibited not a, a woe is me or not anything negative, but she was just always thinking still about her family. And, it, and that is a great gift to pass on that thinking about others, being other focused, being determined to invest in others lives, even when your heart is breaking or you're literally your, your body is breaking down or you're in, in a terminal si situation to still be other focused. And that's what she gave as did my dad to my little sister and me. It's a mm -hmm. wonderful legacy that she passed on Patricia, even in her suffering. Yes. That's amazing. And Cindy, you embrace that with such, such beauty because Thank from you. this pain, you know, you, you truly embrace the truth of Romans 8, 28, right? That all things work together for God's glory and, yes. and our good, yes. because through all of this, we, you started uh, the Maureen Con Connolly Brinker Tennis Foundation. 
uh, you also are involved with the Wipeout Kids Cancer, which I, I read it is the oldest cancer foundation in, in Texas, Texas, which is very yes, impressive. Yes. So you you did something, and I think that's the heart of your book, uh, yes, part yes. of the heart of your book, right? And we're talking about Maureen's new book. It's called Restored. It's a beautiful book. It's called Restored, Recon Reconnecting Life's Broken Pieces. I love this this uh, this Thank picture. You. Oh my goodness! I know that when you saw it, you probably were like yes, they captured that exactly is. the. Essence. You said it so beautifully, Patricia. We are broken people. We are all broken people. And yet God shines through even those cracks. And, and a universal theme, as you know, in Restored, Reconnecting Life's Broken Pieces, is that suffering is a universal experience. None of us are immune from the bumps and bruises of daily living. You know, feast, I think about First Peter 4.12 that says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trials you are suffering as though something unusual mm -hmm. or strange are, is happening to you because suffering is what we experience. I mean, you won't go come and look, you won't go looking for trouble, but it sure will come looking for yes. you. And <laughs> none of us are immune from those bumps and bruises. So how we deal with suffering is what my book is about. How can we move forward, Patricia, as you do in your beautiful ministry, how do we move forward in victory with hope, infusing hope and joy and purpose and peace, even when we're at the end of ourselves? That's because right. suffering is going to happen. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. You know, it, it's interesting that it's been said that we're either in the middle of a crisis leaving a crisis or about to enter a crisis. <laughs> now that's not a very encouraging note, but you know, that's, that's very true. Life. It's just okay. true, Patricia. And so I, 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 I want to help people because I have walked through that valley, both as angry at God. When I was 12, I thought God hated me because I thought mm -hmm. I had done something so bad, so terrible that I was incurring the wrath of an angry God. But then I found Jesus. Then I found Jesus through his outrageous grace and his unwavering love that God surrounded me with the love of Jesus. So when Bob's passing came 33 years later, even though my heart still had that hole in it that started with mom's passing, that we, we all have holes in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And it expanded with Bob's passing, my beloved Bob. And at that point, my son, William, was nine years old. So I together with William, buried our beloved husband and daddy. But this time it was different, Patricia. This time, even though my heart was broken and even though I was still grieving, this time that hole, I knew that God loved me. This time that hole was filled with Jesus. And mm -hmm. even though life came hitting at me again, assaulting with me with cancer, I knew that God loved me with an everlasting love. And so for that reason, I could choose joy. Absolutely. We're trying to that's people. beautiful and uh, you share like in your book you share really your personal experience of living through the traumatic uh, experiences that you've had life-changing events now uh, tell me why is it that you felt in your heart that it, it was time to come alongside people who are hurting and helping them through pain what what that did something trigger that that's a great question Patricia that's a great question I just have a, a real heart and a passion for people who are in dark places and desert experiences. It's just always been my nature to walk alongside hurting people, to encourage them. I, my spiritual gift is, is exhortation and encouragement. You know, and the Bible is very clear that, that when we speak negative words, it dries up the bones, but encouraging mm -hmm. words lifts our hearts and make our souls soar. So I saw because of my work with mothers who have children with cancer, uh, I have always encouraged them that to put their grief into action. That there, there does come a time, Patricia, when we're broken, that we need to just rest and stop and just breathe and just get settled. If it's a loss of a loved one, if, if a dog, a favorite animal dies, if, if there, we have a prodigal child. And, and you, you remember, Patricia, that grief comes in all shapes and sizes. I mean, in the world today, where we read about man's inhumanity to man and, and the suffering and the racism and the hatred, or even just in our daily experiences of discouragement, because 
because the enemy uses the tool of discouragement and he uses the tool of discontentment. Even when we're there, even when we're in that difficult time, it's so important then to, to get settled, but then we cannot stay in neutral forever. Life beckons us forward. So I have seen, when I talk to moms who lose their children to cancer, I encourage them to put their grief into action. And what I discovered in my 20s and 30s that really propelled this idea, uh, Patricia, grief is not a new emotion. And activism isn't a new phenomenon. But I found that when you marry the two, when you merge the two, healing takes place. And as a believer, God is walking alongside us. He's working behind the scenes, even if we can't see him. My goodness, he's carrying us. He's rescuing us. And many times the fact that we're still standing, that we're still standing is testimony to the outrageous grace and goodness of God. So I just really wanted, because I've worked with Wipeout Kids Cancer, I started that 44 years ago, and I've been to many funerals of children. We, we, uh, we benefit children with cancer. It's an organization we've raised millions and millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars for very novel, important research. But we have programs to give hope and comfort and joy to these courageous heroes of ours, these little people, children with cancer and their resilient families. But when we lose a child, I really encourage the parents, number one, to, to put their grief into action. When, when they are, when they're able to do so after grieving, because the grieving process is important to move forward and to be other focused, not self-focused. And also, even though Wipeout Kids Cancer isn't a Christian ministry, many times we pray with the families because we're, families understand now that there can be loss and grief. And one of the things I do say to anybody is that whenever we're at the end of ourselves or in a really difficult situation, don't forget to remember all that God has done for you in the past, mm -hmm. all the ways he's rescued you, carried you, taken you through those valleys, and he'll do it again and again and again. All we have to do is look in our past history to see how God, Patricia, even, even when we can't see it, how he has carried us. And that's the God we serve. So that's important to remember. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's one of the most important exercises when you are going through yes. trials is just to count the times, you know, that the yes. Lord has showed up in a mighty way when there was no hope. And I love it because he actually does miraculous things in the process. Yes. And I believe that those miraculous things that he does while we are going through trials, they are kind of like stakes on the ground of our yes. faith. You know, that well, if you yeah. are intent and you have to be intent, the problem, I believe, and I think that you even mentioned something like that, Cindy, the issue is that I believe too many believers, they think that this faith is going to happen by osmosis you know it's going to like uh, come into you and you're going to all of a sudden be this giant of faith faith is an exercise it's a it's, gift yeah. it's a gift as the bible says but it isn't something that we have to exercise yes. we have yeah. to deliberately remember and that's the best exercise when you're going through something. Remember when the Lord showed up. Remember the yes. times that he has saved. As a matter of fact, if you read the word of God, you see, you know, Moses remembering, David yes. remembering. I mean, these prophets of old, that's what they did when they were going, you know, to through a hard time. They would like you have opened the Red Sea, yes. you have done this, you have done that, so you will do it again, right? Absolutely. You know, uh, so well said, so well said. If I had to summarize my book, I could summarize in two words. I could summarize in two sets of words. One is your favorite, is but God. I love that. that, that those are my favorite two words together, Patricia, <laughs> but God. The other one that I really do stress in Restored is two words, trust God, trust God. It's all about trusting God. My son gave me my favorite definition of joy ever. And joy, he, he shared this with me, that joy, quote, 
Joy is the cheerful confidence in God's power to deliver. I love that because God yeah. always delivers. Now, when we're going through hard times, many people might not believe that. And, and I understand because when I was 12, again, I thought God was angry at me. But again, if we look at our past and we trust him, he does deliver. And I do say this in the book, to your very point, Patricia, that it is a choice, that joy is a choice. But God calls us to choose joy. It is an intentional decision. And many times I have found, and I talk about this very specifically in a section in my book, is that trials can be treasures in disguise. That what we think is so bad, God could think is glorious because he's using that for our good and for his glory. For example, relationships are reconciled. For example, strength and courage, house timidity. Uh, wisdom takes over bad decision-making. Uh, self selfishness is replaced by servant leadership. Hatred and intolerance are ousted with love and with, uh, and with embracing and affection. And the prodigals return, confidence is regained, and most importantly, many times in trials, there is a true authentic relationship with God that's reestablished because hope is ushered in. And you know, I've talked to many people and I believe this with all my heart, Patricia, because it happened to Bob and me, even in the midst of three years of difficulty with our cancer. Many times, probably most times, if a person's really honest, they will look at how through those trials, they championed something. They discovered something about themselves and they saw a purpose in that suffering that was bigger than them. And they would even say, at the end of the road, I would do it all over again. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we have to remember that people are watching us when we're going through those valleys, those dark experiences. Mm -hmm. There are eyeballs on our back. That's and true. people are seeing how you respond in difficult times. Yes, when you're singing from the mountaintops, I'm sure people are, are applauding and, and excited for you. But when you are in the depths of despair or your circumstances are in the depths of despair, when you celebrate God and give him the glory and there's a calm and assurance and even a joy that makes people understand the beauty of God and his healing power. Mm -hmm. And that's an encouragement for those who are watching us Absolutely. And through our experiences. So many people came to know Jesus because Bob, when he was given, we walked out of the oncologist's office, given a three month a three-month death sentence that Bob was told he had a very, very rare cancer. He had three months to live. And Bob said, the minute we walked over that threshold out of the oncologist's office, Patricia, Bob said to me, and he called me beloved. He said, beloved, I don't know if I, if I have three months to live. I don't know if I have, th I don't know if I have three months to live, three years to live or 30 years to live. But from this point forward, we are going to choose joy and everything we're going to do is to glorify God. That was our mission statement that my wow. beloved husband gave me. And that's what we did. Lives were changed. People came into a relationship with Christ oh, because they God. saw that our relationship with God, the God we serve was real. And, you know, Bob said he'd do it all over again. Absolutely. Members of my family were saved. Oh, it, to my it really does. Oh, How yeah. God uses what we think is so bad for glory, because many yes. times what we think is so bad, God is saying, oh, it's glorious. You well, just wait. So we we see we see this, you know, this little yes. little bitty stretch of time. Right. Yes. It's like our 70, 80, 90 years on Earth, if we're, you know, if we're blessed to live that long. Yes. But, you know, God is eternity he and he sits outside of time and so like bob your husband if god were to say would you go through this so that this person would get saved so that this person will know yes. jesus he would say yes yes, he would say yes, yes. because it's eternity it's, it's eternity. what it's eternal it's an eternal gift and it then is. It and is. when you respond yes. that way what exactly. you said is so true when you respond that way and 
those of us who have gone through many, yes. many, many yes. trials, and we know there the peace that surpasses all understanding that Paul yes. talks about. We know it. We know it. And Patricia, we know it. Yes, we do. Not on the paper. We know it. it. Bob's caretakers would say to him, you will love this. And you probably experience this. They would say to him, Mr. Simmons, Mr. Simmons, what is it that you have that gives you so much joy? And Bob would say, oh, no, it's not what I have. It's who has me. Oh, you know, <laughs> oh, I enough said you know enough said. has me and and that provides the joy even when your circumstances are bad you know we have many times we have circumstances beyond our control but we can control our responses to our circumstances i talk about that a lot in the book we can choose joy I, I, and i i share a, a story about a couple who lost their son. It was a murder. It was a horrible thing. It was very publicized in Dallas. And this dear man talking to a slew of media after their son's body was discovered. And he, he was a nationally ranked swimmer, great plans for him, possibly the Olympics. His response was pain is mandatory. Suffering is optional. What? Wow. Pain is mandatory, suffering is optional, because what that dear man said, and I'd become a friend of their family, he was saying the pain is a universal experience. It's a response to grief. Pain is a response to grief. We have it. But how we respond to that grief will dictate the life we live, whether we live in victory or whether we remain in defeat. And that's Absolutely. suffering. So I've just really... Love that. Patricia. I love that. I love that. And uh, Cindy, in your book, I think one of the things that you emphasize in your book is how important it is for you to turn into others, like to serve yes. others yes. with with what you are learning through the process of the brokenness. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about the serving part? Because I know, you know, we're just having two incredible foundations that show that you know exactly what you mean by saying that. Yes, yes. Again, it's turning your grief into action because that grief has got to go somewhere, Patricia. We're either going to internalize it and, and it's going to become bitter and angry. You're going to become bitter and angry. And I would submit to you, the bitterness and anger is like a cancer. It seeks to destroy its host. So, so your grief is either going to be internalized or by sharing, by, by taking it and being other focused and, and thinking about ways to help others. There is a joy that comes in helping others. And, and I've just seen that in my life. Again, when I was 12, I was so angry at God, but when I was 12, I was sitting on a very uncomfortable pew seat, having just buried my mom. And I was so angry. And, and I said, someday, somehow, some way, I'm, and I was shaking my fist at God. I'm going to do something to take away the scourge of a disease that claimed my mother's life. So when I came back from college, I remembered that. And I was still brokenhearted, even though I found Jesus, even though actually he found me. <laughs> at age 16, the Lord came into my life just changed my heart. But then I made good on that promise. And it has changed everything. It's a game changer, Patricia. Absolutely. When you want to do for others, again, healing takes place. It's just, it's an automatic. If you help others, then healing takes place. And that can be that, that you could go and look at serving at your favorite charity, that you could get involved in a community group. I think community is very, very important. And it's important to have a, a small group of trusted friends, confident friends that can undergird you with prayer when your life is at the is so crushing that you can be at the end of yourself. And in community groups, there are going to be times when you're singing from the mountaintops or when you're in those desert experiences. So having a community of friends that you can share with, and again, be outwardly focused. So I have just seen, and I encourage so many people uh, truly, Patricia, to give back, to invest in other people's lives, because then you're taking your pain and there's a purpose also to it. You are helping people move forward in victory. I love that. 
Well, Cindy, I, I hate that we're getting close to the end of our time together because oh. I love talking to you. But I, I wanted to tell you, know, uh, of course, I'm going to put all the information about how to connect with Cindy, how to get this book. And Cindy was so generous. She is giving a copy of Restore to someone in my audience. And all you have to do is just go to the show notes and fill out the form. And you are going to enter the drawing for a chance to get restored. But I will also put in my show notes how to, to purchase it and Thank how to you. get it. Thank so, you. But I would like for you to talk to someone out there, Cindy, who is just facing brokenness. And like you said, uh, is it, grief comes in so many different forms. Yes. We, we yes. grieve over the loss of a loved one, over disease, over even the loss of income, of a job. I mean, this Absolutely. is all grievous times of a human being. And so talk to someone out there and tell them how this book may help them to just find the purpose that God has designed from the beginning of time for this season in their lives. Yes. Oh, thank you. Dear friends, we all will suffer. Again, suffering is a universal experience and trouble will come. It's predicted in the Bible. So we all will suffer. So the question is, how do we respond? And sometimes the suffering is because we've caused circumstances and sometimes we have nothing to do with the circumstances, but we will be battered, bumped and bruised by suffering. My encouragement is to trust God. Know that God has a plan and a purpose for you. And this very purpose of your suffering, like mine at age 12, the worst day of my life was the day I buried my mom at 12 years old. The worst day, the worst day ever. And who would have thought at age 12, that's the day my ministry started. It's the, at age 12, Jesus's ministry started. But when I was the most crushed ever. And, and hard things have come to me since then too, because that's part of life suffering. That God would use that purposely to take my story to bless others. And dear ones, those of you who are listening, even if right now it's even hard to breathe, that life is so crushing, it weighs so much. God has a purpose and a plan in this suffering. People are watching. You never know how God is going to use your experiences, your circumstances. He's going to walk you through it because you can trust God. He is such a God of outrageous grace and unwavering love. He is a good God. He has a son, Jesus Christ, who saves souls for eternity. But how he can use your story to then bless others. So I, I always say God answers prayers in four ways. One is no, not yet. No, 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 not yet. You're not quite prepared or equipped or ready for what I have for you. Be patient. Second is yes, is, uh, is no, I love you too much. No, 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 Cindy, what you're asking for me is so much less than I have for you. Your prayer is so meager. I have so much more for you. So no, not yet. No, I love you too much. The third is yes, I thought you'd never ask. Dear friends, come to God with your broken hearts, with what keeps you up at night, with what crushes your hearts. Come to God. He wants you to talk to him and share with him. Besides, he already knows yes. what you're experiencing. It's no surprise, but he wants that relationship. Talk to him. He will talk back to you. He will share with you what he wants for you. And fourth is yes, and here's more. That's the victory. Yes, and here's more. So pray to God, pray, be involved in community, dear ones. Do not do this life alone. Amen. Being isolated and lonely will not go well for you because that's when the enemy speaks to you with voices of, of discouragement and hatred and wants to make you feel you're not worthy of God's love. So be involved in a community group or a group of people who can lift you up, talk to them when you're feeling low disappointed talk to them read the bible the bible is god's word it, there's power in that right. and then know that your life has purpose i think i covered it yes <laughs> you sure did i love it that you sure you sure did god be the glory to praise god, god to, to him be the glory and i love it god's will is that you will be restored yes restore. restored. a broken boat vase that is filled with gold yeah you know in its cracks you are going to be a beautiful piece of art that will really 
magnify God and bless the kingdom with what he's doing. It's like Cindy said, just pay attention. God didn't uh, take a nap and this happened no, he to didn't. you. You are the you are apple a, of his eye. That's right. If you are a child of God, if Jesus is your Lord and Savior, he didn't sneeze and this happened to you. It, it There is a purpose for the suffering. And he wants to restore you, make you new, and to write a new song in your heart. And glory be to, be, to him. And you know, we would love to hear from people that, that listen to this. And if you will, just put a comment. If you are on YouTube, just comment down down in this comment section and tell us you know how god is working in your life even ask for prayers you can just write it down and we're going to pray for you when you when we when we read it so cindy what a blessing to meet you i hope that so, where where are you right. located i i live in dallas texas okay well, and, one, uh, one of my closest friends in the world is from dallas oh wonderful we love our city (laughs) we love our city we do patricia and to each one of of your wonderful listeners just remember you are delight to god and you are the apple of his eye he loves you and he has a purpose and a plan for you that's good as that's right well, it is a blessing to know you and hopefully Thank I'll meet you, you in person life. one day. We have a we have a common friend. I am I love Black Daniels. She is yes. a darling. Yeah, she yes. is, she's she been is, just the best. She oh is a God. wonderful woman of God. Her and her mother are dear to my heart. But so good to see you and to meet you. Thank you. And let's um let's uh, be in touch. So thank we'll you. We'll do so- that. Thank you, dear one. Loved it. To God be the glory. Thank Thank you, you. sweet Patricia. Thank you, Cindy.